welcome to another episode of Prayer Time on Good News TV. We want to tell you that if you have any prayer requests, you can call us on the number shown on the screen or you can download our Good News TV app and type in your request to us. Also, you can share your request to us on YouTube. We want to assure you that our prayer partners will be praying for you. In the past episode, we were thinking and we were meditating on our identity. We saw that many a times we think of ourselves not worthy, not loved, not good enough. However, we saw that God, the creator of the universe, loved us beyond measure. He showed us the epitome of love which we saw in Jesus who himself said that there is no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. And that is what Jesus did for you and me when we were still sinners. And when we reciprocate to that love, when we accept Jesus as our savior, we are given a new identity. It's like we are clothed with a new identity. And that's what I was sharing last time that we become a new creation in Jesus. We saw that we become the children of God. We become his sons and daughters. And when we become his sons and daughters, we also become heirs of God. And the word of God clearly says that we become co-heirs with Jesus. Apart from this, we saw how we are ambassadors of Jesus in this world. When people see us, they see, they should see Christ in us because we represent Jesus to the world. Well, continuing on this, I would like to show or share with you few more things that identify us when we come to accept Jesus. But before we go into the word, let us look unto the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we are in your presence, Abba Father. We just want to thank you for your word which says that in you we are a new creation. That you have loved us beyond measure, O oh God. And Master, you give us a new identity. This morning, I just pray, even as I share the word, O oh God, you would prepare the hearts of each person, O oh God, that they would receive your word and that they would be transformed through the hearing of this word and coming alive of this word in their lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. So as I said, we saw four characteristics. The next characteristic that I want to share and for that, the text that I have chosen is Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 onwards. And over here it says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless for adoption to sonship. So the next point that I want to share with you is that God has chosen you or you are chosen. Well, before I go into explaining about being chosen and how God has chosen us, I would like to bring another word before you. One is the word chosen, the other is the word selection. Over here, I am using the word chosen. Well, there is a slight difference if you understand between selecting something and choosing something. When it comes to selection, usually you select something based on its qualities from a group of many things. Just to make it simpler to understand, when we go for shopping for vegetables, suppose you are buying tomatoes, what would you do? There would be a lot of tomatoes, but you would select out the good ones, the really red ones, the juicy ones, not the mushy ones, or not the green ones, or not the ones which have some defect in it. But we select that vegetable on the basis of its qualities, that it is good. Also, if we see in this world, there are a lot of competitive exams that happen 
for getting an admission into good colleges or else also for getting a job we see there would be exams many who come in the top few are chosen to go through another interview and after the whole process is over they select a handful of candidates or as the need may be here they are selected on the basis of their performance however the word that i used over here or the word rather the bible uses is that he has chosen us and Ephesians 1 4 said for he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Wow. Even before this world was formed, he chose you and me. Not because of our merits. As I said, choosing can not necessarily be on the basis of some qualities. It could be just that person liked something. For example, there are a lot of chocolates. The child might just come running, not because it's the best chocolate he would choose. Probably he likes it just because of the color maybe or something. Similarly, God did not choose us because we were good or we were worthy or we were holy. However, he chose us because of his love. He chose us because of his grace. He chose us because we are his workmanship. And over here he says, now that he has chosen, he has chosen us with a purpose. And what is the purpose it says over here? That he chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. It's such a beautiful word. Also, if we see in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, Peter is saying over here, For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who, call, who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Why did he choose us? We are a chosen generation. So that we would declare the praises of him. Declare the goodness of the Lord who called us from darkness into his marvelous light. Also, Jesus himself spoke in John chapter 15. Here Jesus said, You have not chosen me for I have chosen you and have appointed you so, you, so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. He chose us. We did not choose him. And he didn't look into our qualities. But he chose us. And he ordained us. That we would bring fruit. And fruit that would remain. Or fruit that would last. That is the beauty of God's selection. Or choosing us rather. Also. As I said that it was not our qualities that made him choose us. Rather it was his mercy and his love. And that is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 where he says, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. It is so beautiful to know that God chose us even before the foundations of the world so that he would make us pure and holy, that we would be found holy. He chose us not we chose him so that we would bear fruit and fruit that will remain a fruit that will last. He has chosen us as a chosen generation so that we would declare his praises. And also if we see 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 it says over here Paul writes, but, he, but we ought always to thank God for you, 
brothers and sisters loved by the lord because god chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the spirit and through belief in the truth he chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the spirit we are the first fruits who are chosen you and me we have been chosen by the mercy of god by the grace of god because of his love which knows no measure so this is the first thing that i wanted to share today with you that you are chosen remember you are special in his sight and that is why you were chosen the second thing that i want to share today is that you are forgiven if we see psalm 103 verse over here david is writing i would like to read psalm 103 verse 12 if we see it says as far as the east is from the west so far as he has he removed our transgressions from us and verse 3 says who he is psalm is saying praise the lord and he says who forgets forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases it is the lord who forgives our sins and not only forgives as far as the east is from the west he takes our sin away like that we know however further east we go west goes even further away there is no place on earth where east and west meet together in the same way when we come before our god and when we ask forgiveness he when we accept jesus he forgives our sins there is no sin in this world which cannot be forgiven by god and that is what isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 says where god is speaking to the children of israel about whom he says that even though the ox knows his own master you don't know me but He says in verse 18 come now let us settle the matter says the lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red as crimson they shall be like wool if you are willing and obedient over here the only condition that the lord puts is that they are willing and obedient the lord puts before you and me the only condition that we come to him and accept yes lord we are sinners and accept that jesus you died for us you paid the price the moment we accept jesus into our lives accept our sinfulness and accept that there is only atonement or forgiveness of sins in jesus we are forgiven just like east is far from the west our sins are taken away even though they might be as dark as scarlet he will make it pure as wool and as i said if we go to ephesians chapter 1 paul over here is saying in verse 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins also first john chapter 1 verse 9 it is written if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness whatever might be your past however dark it might be however hopeless you may think it is there is hope in jesus there is forgiveness in jesus because he says all we just need to do is confess our sins and he will purify us from all unrighteousness he doesn't use the word few unrighteousness or few sins but it is written all unrighteousness all our sins are forgiven by faith in Christ Jesus and that is what the lord is calling you and me to to come to him and receive that forgiveness which is freely given to us so remember you are forgiven so we saw that we are chosen we are forgiven 
Also, we are redeemed. What does redemption actually mean? Well, in the Old Testament, this word has been used a lot. So has it been used in the New Testament. When it has been used in the Old Testament, many times it means to purchase someone or free someone from bondage by paying a price. That is exactly what Jesus did for you and me. We were under, under the bondage of sin. We were under bondage of Satan. Jesus didn't want us to continue there and therefore he came down and he paid the price. He paid the price by shedding his own blood on the cross of Calvary and that way he purchased us back out of the hands of the enemy, back from sin and today we are free because we become children of God. If we read Psalm 107, verse 2, here David says, Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Here the verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. His love is unending. His love endures forever. And we who are redeemed, it's so clearly said, who have been redeemed from the hand of the foe or hand of the enemy. We have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let us declare that he is good. That let us declare his testament, the testimonies of our life. Let us declare his glory and his goodness. So let the redeemed say so. Also, if we read in Ephesians, the text that we were meditating on, chapter 1 verse 7 over here, as I read, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Again, it said, as I said, redemption, Jesus redeemed us by paying the price. It didn't come for free. We could never have got that, that redemption. When God created us, he created us in his image for a fellowship. However, sin broke that fellowship and we went under the bondage of sin forever. And God found only one way out to buy us back or to redeem us back from the enemy. That was by the blood of the lamb, by the the death of Jesus on the cross, the shedding of blood on the cross of Calvary. And that is what he did for you and me. And he brought us back. Also, if we read Galatians chapter 3, verse 30 over here, it says, it's not only from sin that he has purchased us back or he has redeemed because Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. What a powerful word. He not only redeemed us from our sins, but he redeemed us from our curse because he himself became cursed. And he took away the curse and brought the blessings that were in Abraham with the Gentiles, we the Gentiles who did not deserve, who were not worthy to receive those blessings. He made us worthy. He helped us to receive that blessings of Abraham through Christ Jesus. So my dear brothers and sisters, remember you are redeemed. You are bought with a price. You belong to Jesus and not to this world or to sin or to the enemy. So glorify God through your lives. And finally, the last thing that I want to share with you today is that you are special. You are fearfully 
and wonderfully made. Where do we see that? Well, if we read Psalm 139, over here David writes in verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You, your works are wonderful. I know that full well. He goes on to explain, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast the sum of them. David knew that he was special. David knew that the eyes of the Lord were upon him even before he was formed in his mother's womb. Many a times we feel we are not beautiful. We feel we are not good looking. We feel whenever we stand in front of the mirror, we see more of our flaws than the blessings or the goodness or the image of God. The word of God says that we have been created in the image of God. Of course, sin marred that image, but still he knows you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Probably you might have heard that you, we didn't plan you. Probably you might have heard words that we never wanted you, but God planned you. God wanted you. Here I would like to share the story of Nick. Nick Vujicic. If you might have heard about him, many of you might have heard his testimony. Nick, he was an Australian American who was born with a rare disorder. And when he was born, he didn't have his limbs, neither his arms nor legs. And in his autobiography, he writes that when the nurse first came to give him into the arms of his mother, she just went back. She, she just couldn't receive this child because she was so devastated to see the child that was born to her. However, slowly her father, his father, understood that this was God's plan and God has play, had placed Nick in their lives with a purpose. They helped him to know the love of God. However, life wasn't easy. Even when he went to school, he was bullied. He went through a lot of criticism and shame and finally he tried to commit suicide. However, God had different plans for him. The Lord who sees us even before we are formed in our mother's womb had seen him. And it so happened that his mother shared with him a newspaper article of a woman who had severe disabilities but still was praying and praising God. That changed his life. And slowly he started sharing and speaking in prayer meetings. From the age of 17 he started that. And slowly he became a motivational speaker and many of us know his story. He went on in 2005 to establish a organization, non-profit organization, Life Without Limbs. Later on, he established another, Attitude is Altitude. And thus, Nick started moving around, making an impact in other people's life. He found his identity in Christ. He found that he was special. Even though he was different, he was special. He was chosen. He was loved. He was redeemed. He was forgiven and he was a child of God. My dear brothers and sisters, you are special to Jesus. You are loved. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are chosen. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are the child of God. You are heir to God. And you are an ambassador of Jesus in this world. What are you doing with this life? Are you living a life worthy of God? Or are you listening to the lies of the enemy which he is planting in your ears? and thinking you are not worthy.
Remember, we need to know our identity. We need to know who, are, who we are in Christ because he loves us beyond measure. So much so that he gave his life for you and me. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Father, I just want to thank you, O oh God, for this beautiful time. Every person who is listening to this word this time, I just pray that your word would pierce their hearts, that your love would just cover them, engulf them, O oh God, just wrap around them, O oh God, that they would experience your love, that they would experience, Lord, that they are special, O oh God, that they would know that they are forgiven, they are redeemed, O oh God, they are chosen, O oh God, that, Lord, they are your children and they are heirs to the kingdom of God. Our Father, may they know their identity in you, Lord Jesus. Whatever the problems they are going through, many might be here, Lord, with their pains and their burdens. Would you just take their burdens, O oh God? Would you bring your light into their lives, O oh God? Would you bless them, O oh God? Help them to see themselves as you see them. Bless them, guide them, and lead Everyone who's come with a need, I just pray that you would answer their prayers and fulfill all their needs. Bless them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, I want to remind you, if you have any prayer requests, please call us on the number shown on the screen or text us. May the good Lord bless you. Mm -hmm.